Hey, I'm Alan Brito from Blender 3D Architect, and welcome to this tutorial about precise transformations in Blender. In a previous tutorial, I was discussing and talking about precise transformations, but with a focus on uh, moving objects. Let's talk about now uh, scale. Scale is something that will make a lot of people confused when they uh, get started with Blender, uh, especially in a precise modeling environment. Why? Because uh, when you select something in Blender and you try to apply a precise scale, you will notice that Blender uh, uses a scale factor. For instance, this cube that I have here on my screen, you will see that it uh, does have a scale setting here, but with a scale factor. I have here with uh, one for all three axes and this cube, it's the default cube, it's using uh, two meters for uh, X, Y and Z. Uh, if you want to apply a scale factor to this object, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to come here and type the scale that you need, for instance, 0 0.5, and you will get a new scale and a new size for this object. The problem starts to appear when you, uh, want, when you have a target length or a target distance to that particular object. Let me give you one example. Let me remove this, uh, those arrows. And uh, for instance, let's say I have this uh, side here, those edges. I can easily measure them using this measure tool here. If I click in the measure tool, press and hold the control key, you can draw a ruler to get lengths in Blender. I have this length here with uh, two meters. Let's say I want to resize this to uh, 0.65 meters. What is the scale factor that I have to use to get this exact same size? That's when you have to go outside Blender, do some math to find the exact distance or the exact scale factor that you have to use. What many people do is try to figure out what is the scale factor by pressing the S key to apply a scale, try to get close to the distance that you need to try to find the scale factor, which is not ideal because since we are talking about, uh, about precise transformations, the ideal scenario is that uh, you will be entering a numeric value for that scale factor. Now, a way that I use or a resource that I use is a PDT to help me with that. I already discussed PDT or this uh, precise drawing tools add-on many times here in the channel. Let me show you how you can use PDT to help you with this task uh, to resize objects with uh, precision, with a numeric precision here in Blender. First of all, if you don't have PDT yet installed in Blender, it's a free add-on. You can get it from the Blender extensions repository. Just go to the edit preferences under get extensions. If you type here PDT, you will get precise uh, precision drawing tools PDT listed. If you don't have that installed, uh, install button will appear right here in this corner. Just hit that install button and add PDT to Blender. Make sure you have it enabled here under the add-ons tab. You'll see that I have PDT here enabled and we can go back to see how to use PDT. Now, PDT will appear on the uh, sidebar as a tab. I have PDT here and I will expand all of the settings here from PDT. It's a lot of settings. What we'll be using here in PDT to uh, control our scale is this section here called PDT Pivot Point. Let me expand that and I can zoom in so we can take a closer look on how to use these settings. As you can notice here, I'm using this section in case you want to try that yourself. PDT pivot point and the settings that I'll be using to control the scale is this one here, scale distance and system distance. What can we use? Uh, what can we do with that? Uh, in PDT, I'll be uh, giving it a system distance or a 
distance that I want to use as a reference on my 3D viewport. And I want to use the scale distance or the final scale, this fi the final length or the desired length that I want uh, after the scale operation. In this case, I have a scale here with or a length with a two meters. That's the length that I want to change. It's the length of that uh, edge. And I want to resize that to 0 0.65. And after providing both the system distance and the scale distance, you can see that PDT gave me a scale factor here. Let me just highlight it for you. This is the scale factor that PDT gave me. If you type here, you can see that it's it gave me a scale factor of 0 0.325 for all axes. Now, how can we use this scale factor? You don't have to do any kind of external math or calculations to get into this uh, scale factor. PVT will do this part for you. Now, we have to press this button here, this scale, to apply the actual scale, the actual uh, resizing of our object. But as you can notice, it's a grayed out. We can't use the scale right now, and the reason for this is simple. It's because PDT will work in edit mode. Now, if I go into edit mode here with my Cube selected, press the scale button. You will see that PDT will apply the scale. Let me go back to object mode. And if I try to measure this distance, I'm using the ruler again, the measure tool. You will see that PDT just gave us the exact scale factor that we needed to change the scale from uh, the length from 2 to 0 0.65 meters. And this is it. This was a quick overview on how to manage precise 3D modeling uh, transformations, scale transformations in Blender with the help of PDT. Using PDT, uh, by using PDT, you will be saving a lot of time because you won't have to do any external calculations to find scale factors in Blender. If you want to learn more about precise 3D modeling in Blender, I do have a 10 hour workshop uh, just about precise 3D modeling in Blender, where I explain basically almost everything about PDT and other resources from Blender that will help you uh, work and apply 3D modeling in Blender to architecture, uh, engineering, 3D printing, woodworking, anything requiring uh, precise 3D modeling techniques. Uh, besides this uh, workshop, I also have a, ser a series of books with the exact same content explaining how to use PDT with step-by-step -step instructions. I will leave links in the description uh, to all of these uh, resources. Getting them uh, will support my work here in Blender 3D Architect. If you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future tutorials. See you next time. Bye.